The death of Bryn Martin just off Cottesloe Beach has again raised questions about the increase in shark attacks in WA waters. Fearful surfers are reporting more and more sightings of great white sharks and there have been calls again for shark culls to reduce the risk to beachgoers. But according to the experts, the problem is more complicated than that and a solution even more elusive. I spoke with CSIRO shark expert Barry Bruce from Hobart earlier. Barry Bruce, thanks for your time. No worries, Andrew. There are lots of theories about why shark attacks are on the rise in WA, but I want to get your expert take on what the hard research is telling us. Now, the increasing number of attacks in WA is being blamed by some on the increasing number of sharks. Is it that simple? No, Andrew, it's, it's not that simple. We, we have 19 records of attacks by white sharks in Western Australian waters since 1839. So although uh, the shark attack is, is a real danger in entering the sea, it's still an unlikely danger in, of entering the sea. But one of the, one of the issues for, for everybody, including ourselves, is understanding the numbers of, of uh, white sharks in particular in area, any areas in Australia. What, what we know from our research is that white sharks are not residents to any particular area, but they travel widely across their Australian range. For example, many of the white sharks that we tag in South Australian waters will move into Western Australian waters, sometimes on a seasonal basis, and travel as far north as Exmouth and the Montebello Islands before returning to uh, South Australian waters. Now, some people are suggesting that seal colonies along the coast and the increasing number of migrating whales are also drawing sharks down to the southwest. Now, is there any evidence to support that theory? Look, there's, there's no doubt that, that seal numbers in various parts of southern Australia have been increasing. However, one of the things that, probably a common misconception with white sharks, is, is that white sharks just don't live on seals. In fact, an individual white shark will spend f uh, a very small proportion of its year feeding on seals. Most of the year, white sharks are away from seal colonies and feeding on things that are very, very different to seals, like various finfish, other sharks and ray species. So the numbers of seals uh, al alone are only one factor that drives the distribution and movement patterns of white sharks. They, they certainly aren't the only answer. So if it's not any of those explanations, is there anything in your research that helps explain the rise in attacks? Look, look any form of accidental death or injury, whether it be shark attack or car accident or, or whatever, is incredibly tragic. And it'd be lovely to be able to find ways of, of minimising the risk or even reducing it to zero. Sadly, that's, that's probably not the case. Now, although shark attack is, is extremely tragic, uh, it is still very rare relative to the amount of time that we spend in the water. And when you consider that we've had 19 attacks in Western Australia since 1839 by white sharks, it's still a very unlikely risk of entering the sea. We will see some years where you see more shark attacks than others. And interestingly, when you look at the distribution and abundance of sharks uh, in our waters, what we see in areas where we have monitored them is that there are some years where you see more sharks and some years when you see less sharks. And I think that's reflected in a lot of comments that you hear from people. Some people are worried that it may be the same sharks returning to the same place where they've attacked humans before. Is there any evidence to suggest that they stalk a particular place in search of human beings as food? Certainly not in the case of human beings. There's, there's no evidence that a shark, if it has bitten a human being, is any more or less likely to do so again. There are certainly areas though where sharks will commonly frequent. If you take uh, some examples like the Neptune Islands in South Australia, Australia's largest seal colony, there's no doubt that some sharks can return there year after year and sometimes even um, with, within a few days of, uh, of arrival uh, each year. It's, it's, um, some sharks do do that. Um, there has to be a reason for them to do that and there has to be a common source of, of their natural prey. So the likelihood, for example, that the shark responsible for the latest attack at Cottesloe could be the same shark that took Ken Crew back in 2000 is very, very unlikely indeed. That's right. That, that, that sort of scenario would be very unlikely. There are multiple sharks that move up and down our coastlines. Um, uh, we've done a fair amount of satellite tracking and acoustic tracking, so we've been able to follow individual sharks, even sharks that have moved up and down the, the West Australian coast. We know that they swim at around about three to four kilometres an hour, and that puts them moving uh, upwards of, of 70 to 80 kilometres per day. So uh, 
A shark that, that um, is involved in the shark attack, the next day it can be 70 to 80 kilometres away and uh, that shark can, you know, this time next year can be in South Australian waters. Now every attack seems to prompt an immediate call for a shark cull. Would that bring any benefit at all? Would that reduce the risk of shark attacks at all? Look, it, it's, it's, re it's really hard to work out how you minimise what is already a, a, a very small risk. And, and although it's a high profile risk and it doesn't uh, detract from the tragedy of, of these sort of circumstances. They, they are quite rare occurrences. They are widely spaced in both time and space. It's really hard to, to work out um, how you can reduce these, these sorts of events any, any further down than what they are now. Uh, culling has been suggested uh, and, and various ways of doing that. Um, because we know that white sharks are, are, are visitors to, to uh, the waters off Perth, off Western Australia in particular, and that they they uh, they come from all over uh, southern Australian waters, moving through the Perth area. Uh, it, it would seem highly unlikely that that culling uh, sharks at one particular point is going to reduce the numbers visiting that site over time, and hence it's unlikely to reduce risk. Do you think then that we should just accept? that these are rare, terrifying, but sometimes unavoidable consequences of being in the sea. I think, Andrew, that, that sadly sums it up. Um, mind, mind you, look, we, we've been doing a lot of research on the movement patterns of white sharks. Uh, if anything that we can find out can help us better understand what drives the uh, patterns of abundance in our coastal waters in a way that we can use to minimise risk, then that would be a wonderful outcome. There are certainly areas where the, the risk of encounter with white sharks are, are, are likely to be higher and, and uh, we've, we've spoken about seal colonies during, during this interview and they're certainly a focal point for sharks. They're not the only place where sharks occur um, but at, at the moment it, it, uh, uh, shark attack still is a, a real but unlikely danger of entering the sea. Barry Bruce, thanks for talking with 730 WA. It's a pleasure.